come to this video, very quick introduction, and I feel rather liberated that we're starting very late, so I can give you a very, very quick introduction. And uh, talk about the context of the project. This is a research project. And then uh, we will have, um, it's a collaborative project, so we will have presentations from the team that has been engaged in the research in South Africa. The team from Brazil is unfortunately not able to be here, but we will try and share a snapshot of their work, and then we will have a presentation from the team that's been engaged in the research in India. Uh, we have also requested in advance uh, some uh, friends in this group to formally respond to the research so that we can um, better our analysis and uh, make, make it more nuanced. And that certainly does not mean that others shouldn't contribute. So there is some open spaces to also uh, talk to the points that come out in the research. So basically, we will go through uh, two sets of presentations from the sites, and then a brief a presentation that will set the directions for the synthesis, which is a task that remains to be done. Um, and we have a small open group at the end, which is more to do with the interests that bring us together in the direction of researching, doing policy work, as well as program-related work in the, at the intersection of gender technology, governance, and democracy. So that will be an open uh, panel. Um, what uh, some of us in the group felt that it might be a good idea, soon after I just go through the introduction, which is really brief, to be able to watch uh, about 15 minutes each of video films of the project from the two different sites. And otherwise, I think talking about these things in a highly abstract, theoretical way seems sometimes to do less justice to what has happened because the constraints are so many always in action research. Or at other times, seems like we are having these theoretical exaggerations, you know, big concepts coming out of nothing. So I think it's important to really uh, stay, stay true to that uh, balancing act. And so we think that, uh, you know, screening the films would be useful. I'd just like to run through this very, very quickly. Um, women have actually was born out of a previous uh, collaboration, uh, a loose kind of research network that we uh, were fortunate to set up in 2010. And we were extremely fortunate to also meet up uh, Desiree through that project. It was called Gender and Citizenship in the Information Society, City Gen for short, which is an acronym that she had coined. And uh, City Gen, of course, uh, enabled us to uh, enter these questions around gender and technology, perhaps in, in, a, in a very, very um, explicitly southern way, uh, in, and put that into the debate around ICTs and gender, for perhaps, perhaps for the first time. I mean, I don't mean to sound uh, immodest, but I think the group really was, you know, really gung-ho about problematizing what literature existed and bringing in perspectives that could go back to traditional theories and conceptions of the global south. Now, post that, we were again fortunate to uh, be approached by um, a person in a funding organization, because funding organizations are not monolith again, who said, why don't you guys continue to work together, but a small subset, which will be like a collaborative research project between India, Brazil, and South Africa. And she was extremely supportive of action research methodologies, which I think very, very few funders have time, patience, or money to support because evidence has to be generated and certain methodologies are privileged over certain others uh, as it happens uh, in the business of evidence these days. That is how Women Club was born. So Desiree continues to be associated with these questions that IT for Changes wanted to ask around citizenship and gender and look at the information society context. So, um, I'm very sorry I'll have to get into uh, the lingua franca of research. Under what conditions will greater citizen engagement lead to enhanced state responsiveness and accountability? This is the question. This is the meta question that the project or the larger program from IDRC that is supporting us is asking. That is the Governance, Security, and Justice Program of IDRC, GSJ for short. And for them, the interest has primarily been in the area of just, you know, understanding governance, security, justice, a lot of literature and add and stir things around fragile states, 
uh, violent states, unaccountable states, and a kind of an afterthoughtish reference to, hey, you know, can ICTs also do something in, in this mix? You know, what are the positive things that ICTs can do to perhaps redeem the extremely insecure and extremely unjust lives that most people seem to lead? So we turned it on its head and we said India is also a very fragile state, although it doesn't qualify under definitions that you know you and may be adopting because at least 30% of India is not really directly governed by the state. In many ways, if you actually and that is where probably there is local insurgency, etc., etc. Same may be true that the state is present, but the fragility of the state and the lack of accountability is experienced by the most marginalized in a very very everyday sense. So we, we said, you know, what is this thing about calling, labeling some states fragile, you know, let's, let's look, take this project and place it right in, at the heart of the governance security justice program. So we also started by saying that we are uh, using a feminist method of inquiry, therefore it is a normative inquiry and we can't be shy of that. And we really wanted to, uh, as a group interested in reclaiming the notion of active citizenship from the good governance discourse, and it's uh, the complete uh, slide in, through the slippery slope of developmentalism into, you know, add citizenship and you get empowerment, add empowerment and you get citizenship. You know, that kind of easy, you know, slippages in vocabulary. So we wanted to reclaim it out of that from the new public management paradigm and place it really, you know, in the way in which it's so complex and even problematic, you know, from this kind of Westphalian understanding of liberal citizenship. And we really felt that ICTs are more than tools. They are really, you know, co-constitutive elements of society. And we do see as, you know, we've seen in presentations in the preceding few days, that there are new network governance arrangements. And how do you then understand ICTs as just, you know, those external tools out there, as if, you know, they aren't. So they're very much part of the mix. So the main hypothesis of the project is this. We believe that the guided use of technologies Digital technologies enables marginalized women to gain active citizenship at the local level because our preoccupations were in very situated geographies. You know, we were wondering what's going to happen of people, you know, who could identify their local government and not this abstract concept of the state. Yeah. So the guided use of technologies enables marginalized women to gain active citizenship at the local level, democratizing formal and informal institutions and systems particularly in the sphere of local governance, by creating empowering ecologies. And these empowering ecologies are informational, communicative, and associational, and they expand possibilities for collective action. Now, we went through a lot of uh, heartache to chisel this out, and, uh, you know, Srinata guided us through this uh, process. And I think um, what's really important here is we felt that informal systems were asked as important as formal systems. And this is recognized by the prospectus from IBRC because we know that where the mafia is generally ruling, then your citizenship is very much mediated by you know the entitlement that they make available for you. So in some sense, this is true also for the kinds of social structures, caste systems, caste elites, you know, and, uh, and in places like Brazil, the very, very palpable presence of the church uh, you know, in, in the uh, neighborhoods that are uh, poor and marginalized. So there were four sub-hypotheses, uh, and you know, using this coinage of guided use, we believe that guided use can create a new culture around information and enhance the capacity of marginalized women to negotiate and challenge existing information hierarchies. We believe that Guided use could enable women to understand and respond critically to different institutions and power relations and positively influence their relations with local government structures. And the third and fourth, the third we believed is that it was possible to use community media to effectively set up a counter public to trouble the status quo. And lastly, fourthly, we were interested in seeing how guided use could forge solidarities. Because our analysis was that uh, governance and the experience of citizenship, you know, uh, and the context of marginalized women in in the emerging economic, political economy and economic conditions is atomizing movements. 
And therefore, is it possible to forge translocal and local solidarities? And these are my last three slides in Brazil, Instituto Nupef, uh, head, uh, which was the research was led by uh, Graciela Salaman. Um, it worked with 30 Afro-Brazilian women leaders in the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro. And they were interested in seeing how public service delivery could be made accountable, voices could be channelized in the citizen forums, how the local discourse of digital inclusion, democracy, and governance would be shaped by the voices of these women. In India, my colleagues from Prakriye, which means a social process, uh, at the Center for Community Informatics and Development, uh, which works with Dalit women's collectives in Rupal Mysore, attempted a similar thing. They also have been working with uh, information centers, and for the purposes of uh, rigor in the research, we didn't only work with the older centers. We set up new centers at the start of the process, and although it's not like uh, a quantitative methodology, we still wanted to see what could happen in that kind of controlled condition of, of, of the lab of uh, the research. Uh, the center runs community media. We use mobile phones, um, IVRS platforms, we use tablets, and more recently in the past maybe six months, we've started using GIS. And in South Africa, the project has drawn together students from um, University of the Western Cape. And these students have been interacting with and uh, exchanging thoughts and uh, building community with young women associated with NGOs in Cape Town, who are essentially from poorer neighborhoods, to build their political voice. So it is an exercise of coming together and interrogating, you know, whether there exists any notion of citizenship, you know, in, in the ways, uh, in the everyday lives of these women. And they have focused very much uh, on safety and bodily integrity, public transport, and